The Washington Capitals and Detroit Red Wings are battling it out for the final playoff spot. They meet tonight in an Eastern Conference battle. We'll discuss that right here on Puck Time, powered by Wager Talk TV. Guys, welcome in. I'm Andrew McGinnis. I have Carmine Bianco and Lawrence, the Prez, Presman here with us to break down these games. Best bets, of course, at the end of the show. We also have Rangers, Islanders, and a rematch of the Hurricanes and Boston Bruins. Carm, three great games you selected for today, man. Looking forward to breaking these down. How are you? I'm good, man. Uh, two and one night in the NHL, so we keep uh, moving along. Split up, uh, split out on a couple of player props, but one of the client plays that I uh, gave out on the show uh, was the Jack Eichel one, and uh, that one got there. He scored the first two goals for her. Uh, so they're never going to take those ones away. And then he picked up a couple more and uh, we're pretty much safe after that. And of course the Leafs, they did it the hard way against the Pittsburgh Penguins. And Andrew, you and I talked about what happened with Sid the Kid. I guess we're still calling him Sid the Kid and not starting the OT, but uh, it could have been a skate issue, could have been uh, an injury problem. But nonetheless, both teams, it worked out. Pittsburgh gets a point, Leafs get uh, the two points they needed. And uh, we move on to today. This first game, man, I had to put this on the card. It's it's Carolina and Boston. And if you guys remember, we covered this, uh, these two teams last week. They played against each other. And if the final, the, the Bruins in that game went into Carolina. They scored three goals in the first period. Freddie Anderson uh, was in goal in that one. And then they go on to win the game four to one. And, uh, you know, I, I, I said, uh, watching that game, I'm like, Carolina's playing a lot better than this score line is. So I, you know, I wait the next day. I look at the analytics of the game. I come back to a couple of days later to see if there's any changes. The analytics are still the same. You look at it, the final, and this, this lends to the fact that the Boston Bruins can win games at any point in the season, even when they're not playing at their best. They won that game 4-1. They weren't playing their best because if you look at the analytic numbers, the final XG in that game were, was 4.83 for Carolina to 2.48 for the Boston Bruins. Um, scoring chances, 39 to 22 for Carolina. Now you can look at it. Did the goalie stand on his head in that game? I don't think so. It's just a chance. It's just one of those misfiring things. And now it's that rapid revenge that we talk about, Andrew. Uh, it's not a back-to-back. -back. Carolina's won two games since. The Bruins have won one game uh, since. I think it was against uh, the Florida Panthers. But I, I think Carolina is the spot here because these two teams, as far as as far as seedings go, um, it doesn't matter in the first round. It doesn't matter in the second round, but because these two teams don't get involved with each other, it is in the conference finals. If these two teams mean the conference finals, the team with the higher point count during the regular season, even if the Bruins finish second overall. Um, and, and uh, actually, no, it doesn't matter if they finish second overall. The higher seeding, uh, well, they're going to finish second as far as the number one seed in the Met, uh, in the Atlantic. That's what I meant. But even though they finished second because they finished first in the Atlantic, if Carolina has more points, they will get home ice in the conference finals. So uh, I had to look that up. It sounds a little convoluted, but follow me on this. It's a game of importance for both teams. And uh, this is one where I look at it, and the goaltenders haven't been confirmed, but it's Swayman expected. It's uh, Kachikov, who didn't start in that game. And you look at Kachikov, his last eight starts, one bad start, 7-6 to Washington, he loses. In his other seven starts, he's only allowed 12 goals. He's playing well. He's given them a chance to win. They have a good two-goalie system there. I'm going to go with Carolina in this game. I think that's the play. Prez, what are your thoughts? Well, firstly, thanks for having me, guys. Excited. Tuesday, ready to rock and roll. Shout out to all my clients. Uh, I just want to thank them, man. Last week, we started off Monday and Tuesday an absolute horrible, horrible run. I think we went two and seven over those two days. And then Wednesday was uh, a losing day. Since then, all I've done is one, and a bunch of you guys stuck with me all the way through it. Uh, so I'm so appreciative. Uh, tonight, I have my first MLB 5% play in two years. And you guys know I do not release 5% plays very often. First MLB 5% play in two years. So I'm super stoked about that. And I'm also coming into this show on a 7-0 and 
run in NHL up double digit profit. So with that said, let's take this game apart. So let's look at this from a side perspective. Uh, Boston really super hot right now. They've won four in a row playing outstanding defense, held their team, all four of their opponents to two or under goals. Um, One of those was Carolina, a 4-1 win. Carolina won two in a row, four of their last five, and seven of their last ten. These two teams have basically the same record. From a head-to-head perspective, Boston won, Carolina won, Boston won, Carolina won, Boston won, Carolina won, Boston won, Carolina won. If you guys think that the side play in this game is worth taking, you are out of your mind. Everything about this is dead even. You might as well flip a coin, get your cat to pick. Why would anybody, we have a whole slate of games. And I am going to be the hero that picks the winner of this one? Hell freaking no. Straight up pass. With that said, I do like the under in this game. Uh, Carr mentioned that these two teams might face off against each other down the road in the playoffs, although I don't see it because the Leafs are going to be there. Uh, I think we're going to have a playoff-type atmosphere. And, man, both these teams are playing just rock-solid defense. You look at Carolina. They have shut three teams out in their last five games. Think about that. They shut out Detroit. Detroit scores. They shut, shut out Montreal. My D-League team could shut out Montreal. They shut out Columbus. Columbus scores. Uh, they held Washington to two. They, they in, in their last 10 games, they have three zeros and two ones. Five of their last 10 games, they've held opponents to one goal or less. You look at Boston, we spoke about it earlier. They held Florida to two, Carolina to one, Nashville to zero, Washington to two. No team has scored more than three goals against them in seven straight games. You guys are nuts if you think you can figure out which team is going to win this game. But the under feels like a good bet. I'm going to jump in here because it's not about making hero calls, Prez. It is understanding the analytics of the game. And I get it. Um, you don't take analytics of the game and apply it to when you're making uh, 90% of the time. I don't think you take analytics and apply it to any of your plays. Um, you just see uh, as far as box scores or the eye test, like Dave Koken talks about a lot of the times. But you have to you have to incorporate the analytics into this. And if you look at the last game, the last game tells you that uh, Carolina should have won the game based on analytics. They didn't. Sure. And again. It, it lends to the fact, I told you, the Bruins can win at any time against any team. Uh, you look at them, everyone thought uh, they, they would, they'd go into Toronto, the Leafs would, would beat them. I thought so. They didn't. Everyone thought the reverse game back in Boston, the Leafs had a chance to beat them. They didn't. Um, it, it's one of those ones. The Leafs played well, but they played just well enough to lose by 4-1 score lines both times. And this isn't me pounding on the Leafs. This is, I'm just trying to make a point of when you play a team back to back, it's if it's a very good team, uh, and, and the difference is we should see Kochakov in net instead of Freddie Anderson. And uh, he's been playing well. He's, he's given his team a chance to win. And even the market agrees to some point. This game opened up with the Bruins' favorite. It's pretty much a pick em. Money has come in on, on Carolina in this one. Uh, this late in the season, I, I'm straying away from totals because betting unders in games in which have added added incentive like this one uh, of winning a game in regulation, gaining two points on a team, um, getting a regulation win. Uh, we're seeing some uh, we're seeing some goalies being pulled with three or four minutes left in the game. Uh, it's a little dicey to be taking an under when a goalie there's the possibility a goalie can be pulled in three or four minutes. Andrew, any thoughts on this? Well, I what you get to respond to me and I don't get to respond back after you tell me how I handicap, which you don't have any idea about how I Guys, handicap. I, tell me I didn't I have time to make my coffee when I handicap. Do you mind if I go make coffee and come back? I'll go make yeah, a cup and then come please. back. 
All right. Please, Andrew. I'll be right back. I'll be right back. Okay, so Carr, back to us. Brother, I am not saying that Carolina can't win this game. I'm saying that there's better bets on the board. I'm saying that this game is a pick 'em. And funnily enough, the bookmakers agree that it's a pick 'em. I'm I'm saying that the under is a better play, and as far as analytics go, brother, of course I take analytics into account. I prefer to use the rhythm of teams over analytics, but I analytics can keep me off of a bet. And as far as Carolina should have won the last game against Boston, they were dead even in shots, dead even. So, you know, I know shots, are, according to a lot of people, aren't important. They're important to me. They suggest where, who had, no team can shoot the puck on another team if they don't have the puck. That's not an analytical fact. That's an actual fact. You have to have the puck to shoot the puck. So uh, I'm just suggesting flat out that this is a tough game to pick. And the under stands out to me. I'm not going anywhere near this game. Dude, I'm not betting the under. I'm not betting anything in this game. I'm, this game is so far out of my mind, it is, it is ridiculous. But I, I recognize why you put it on. It's a sexy matchup. If I'm going to bet it, I'm going to take the under. Uh, should we just do this without Andrew the whole way through? No, absolutely not. Uh, you gave him time. You said you were going to chat for a while. You went on for about three to four minutes. And uh, there and he Andrew is. is coming back. Uh, and I want his thoughts on it. Listen, as far as we're concerned right now, without knowing Andrew's opinion on this game, um, I would take a 3-1 Carolina victory. You can get your under. I yeah, will win dude. with Carolina. I and, think Carolina. Uh, but, but that's hard. subject to change. I'm happy with a 7-1 Carolina victory. Yeah, Listen, Let it be an 80-1. I don't care. Andrew. Well, it's great that you don't care. But at least when you're on this show, to show it just a little bit of respect to the two hosts. The same Dude, way I gave Andrew out and I the would under. to you and, and Theodore. Uh, Andrew, what are your thoughts on this game? I'm not doing this because to stir anything up, but uh, guys, I like the over in this game. And uh, it's just because of a lot of times, you know, how you guys know how I am about the rapid revenge, the recent history when a team plays each other and we see a game go under that probably should have gone over. And they get a chance to play and you know next week or the week and a half later or three games later usually i look towards the opposite of what happened as far as the total is concerned and carmine mentioned the analytical numbers how that game should have had far more goals than it ended up having and people think that sometimes being familiar with a team leads to defense but i say that leads to offense you know it's a lot easier to go ahead and game plan and figure out what a team is doing defensively and work around that and try and score than it is if you haven't seen a team uh, in quite some time, right? You don't know what they do. You don't know their tactics. I find that sometimes defensively, you stay at home a lot more. But one thing about this Boston Bruins team, guys, I've noticed a lot. They go over a lot more at home. Four of the last five games have gone over the total at TD Garden. When they go on the road, they're a whole different team. And I think a big part of that is they don't get that they don't get that matchup they want. They don't get the last change they're looking for here, guys, with that. And Carolina themselves, I believe Prez was reading off the numbers for their defensive stats, and he's right. I mean, they have been locking teams up. They play very, very sound defensive hockey. But we're seeing a five and a half. And I know a lot of the five and a halves lately have been going under. A low total, low for a reason. But with you know the amount of goals that should have happened and taken place in the last meeting. And now we switch venues, go to TD Garden, Boston plays at home. I believe we see both teams contribute. And one thing I've noticed a lot here, guys, lately, when you're betting overs, it takes two to tango. So, you know, a lot of times if I've been betting an over, let's say it's Colorado against Columbus, right? You know, typically you should just take the team total over because you all know which team you think is going to carry that over. But the best part to me about this matchup is, 
Either team could win the game. Either team could carry the over. 4-2 final works for me in the in the uh, five and a half. So I'm on the over here in this one, guys. But uh, that's a lot yeah. on the first game. <laughs> it is. Andrew, it is. And, and uh, you know, we look at it and, you know, over the course of the season, uh, you can look at the numbers and uh, the Bruins over the course of the season um, have pretty much been dead even on overs and unders at home. But if you look at sort of the recency bias, 6-3-1, their last 10 to the over um, at home. Four and one, their last five games to the over um, at home. So it's uh, it, it is one of those uh, one of those ones that you look at trends, you look at the season long numbers, but sometimes what's in front of you is what you've got to play. And you we you know we saw it sort of with the Ottawa Senators eliminated from the playoffs. All of a sudden they start to score and they start to win games, and they play the spoiler role. Sometimes you can't avoid those. We like to put stamps, and I'm coming to you in a second, Prez. We love to put stamps on teams and say, because I do it all the time, this team is tanking. But it is hard for a team of 20-some-odd players to go onto the ice and not give an effort and tank. Sometimes you just aren't that good. And what looks like tanking is actually your team pretty much stinking the place up. Prez? Yeah, Carm, lots to say quickly. Tanking doesn't exist in hockey. We saw it last year. Uh, with the Chicago Blackhawks. Look, they got lucky and won the lottery, but they could have had a higher chance if they didn't beat Pittsburgh in the last game of the season, but they did. Um, so, uh, and and that game also proved that must-win games. Pittsburgh could have made the playoffs. All they had to do was beat Chicago. They didn't. So, uh, yeah, be careful with this tanking concept. Um but listen, guys, I just want to end this Boston Carolina segment by saying this. I like the under. Andrew likes the over. Carm likes Carolina. I, I you know, it, 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 this, the fact that we're all over the map on this game proves my point. It's a good point, Press. Yeah, it's good point. an impossible game to handicap, and I highly suggest everyone stay the hell away from it. Press, can point I is ask you a question? During all of this, our producer Dan, during our producer Dan, during all of this, literally checked off those three, and he bet the Bruins tonight because none of us <laughs> touched on the Bruins. So uh, we're expecting yeah. a Bruins victory. If they could win by exactly five and a half goals, five and a half to zero, that would just cancel <laughs> all three of us out. Um, uh, Press, I, I've been asking most guests this. I, I apologize if I already asked this to you, but. Do you find yourself betting on mostly games that involve two playoff teams, maybe two non-playoff teams or one or the other? Does that matter to you? Like I've actually found that I've actually had a better read on the games that involved non-playoff teams because to your point, all three of us like hockey. We love watching hockey, right? And I've been trying to be more of a fan of being like, you know what? This is a great game tonight, Boston, Carolina, to your point. We don't have to bet on it. You know, we we all like hockey. We could watch it and enjoy it. And I find that sometimes right now, the best bet might be in, you know, Anaheim versus San Jose, as weird as that right, might sound, right. right? So the answer to my question, Andrew, is I never bet on teams in hockey. Ever, ever, ever. I bet on teams in the NFL. I bet on teams in college basketball and NBA. But never, ever do I bet on a team in hockey. I only bet against teams. So... Uh, I never look to bet on teams. I bet against teams. I was betting against Pittsburgh. I got it wrong. I, I've been betting against Washington. I've got it right. Um, I'm looking to bet against teams and their rhythm. You know, for instance, are we talking Dallas Buffalo on the show? No. No. For instance, the rhythm of Dallas and Buffalo suggests me not to bet on Buffalo but to bet against Dallas tonight. So that would be an example of sort of how I'm looking at a game. I look at Dallas. They just had a rival matchup against Colorado. They're hot as hell. That was a big win against them. They're coming back from a road trip. Bad spot for Dallas, looking to bet against them. Then I look at the line. Then I look at their opponent. Is their opponent playing in the right rhythm that I think that they could win the game? I look at Buffalo. They just lost to Detroit, but they played their hearts out in that game. So, you know, that's an example of sort of how I'm attacking the NHL card on a regular basis. I never look to bet on a team. 
Guys, quite the start here uh, to this edition of Puck yeah. Time. Uh, thanks for being with us. If you're watching on YouTube or YouTube Shorts, hit the like button. Comment. Let us know what you are betting and uh, let us know what you're betting in this game. I mean, what better way to start things off than a little bit of a, uh, of a, a game like this where we all have something different. And shout out to Nespresso because I was able to run downstairs in my house, make a coffee in a handful of minutes during the show. You got to love that. <laughs> You got to love it. You got to love it. Thoughts, deep, deep thoughts from the Prez. If you guys want more of the Prez's deep thoughts, call 1-900-THE-PEZ. 1-900-THE-PEZ. So, Do uh, you remember? $5 a minute, uh, $50 max. Do you remember a few years ago, I texted Brian. Brian's a friend of Carmen and I. I texted him. I'm like, I wanted to get a tattoo. Brian's a good friend owns a tattoo parlor. So I texted him like, hey, send me your buddy's cell number who owns a tattoo parlor. I'm in my car with both my daughters. Brian sends the number. I dial the number. Hello, welcome to the gay hotline. For this, press one. For that, press two. And he got me twice. Twice. Anyway, let's get it. Let's Are you getting on. the Grateful right. Dead tattoo or no? Are you getting that tattoo, got, Grateful Dead? Oh you, oh, you did get it. My bad. I, I thought yeah. you got it. Yeah, moving nice. On. Okay. Moving All right, uh, Prez. Let's on. get to you. said you were fading the Washington Capitals. Well, they had a little mini streak, but since then, they just haven't looked the same, and I think a lot of that has to do with their lack of depth. But tonight, they're playing the Red Wings, and the only thing I think about this game is I maybe wouldn't want to play Detroit at the price that I see them at right now, just based on how they've been playing. What are your thoughts on this matchup here, Prez? Yeah, Andrew, look, I'm looking at Washington, and I think they're on an amazing streak. They've lost six games in a row. That's a stunning <laughs> yeah. streak, and one that I've been taking advantage of. And I'm, you know, I, I look at this Washington team, and I think they're, they have no depth. They're crazy old. They're tired. They have to be miserable. They probably can't get it up. The, there's, there is not, I mean, how do you hold a playoff spot 10 days ago and then go and proceed to lose six freaking games in a row? And it's not, Andrew, they didn't lose six games in a row to Boston, the Avalanche, Colorado, and Vancouver. They, Pittsburgh came into their barn, and they didn't even show up. They put up 21 shots against Ottawa. No, 22 shots. 22 shots against Ottawa. 22. You think that's bad? They put up 16 shots on Carolina. That is four and a half that's 5.2 shots a period a period this washington team is what we call well done they're finished throw the steak away you overcooked it it's a piece of poop so am i betting on the red wings today i'm betting against the capitals the Red Wings and the New York Islanders are the two teams I think will make the playoffs, but we're going to find out. I think the Red Wings play Pittsburgh tomorrow night. Giant, colossal game. Um, the, the, this Capitals team should be ashamed of themselves. Yeah, I mean, uh, I like what you said there, Prez. I said they were on a good streak, and now you said they're still on a good streak. It's just... Uh... A good streak for us to fade them is what their streak is right now. And the funny thing is, you look at some of their losses, they've come against good teams and bad teams, you know, bad teams. Uh, losing to some non-playoff, Ottawa, but then also yep. Carolina and Boston, Toronto, those teams. So, but here's the deal. I think overall, even in losses for Detroit recently, Carm, they've at least been playing better defense for Washington, you know, in victory or defeat their defensive game hasn't been very strong. What do you think? Uh, Andrew, there's, there's a couple points here. You, you look at it and it's just teams that, uh, you know, Detroit looked cooked a while ago and a lot of it had to do with the Dylan Larkin, obviously injury. 
and not being able to score. And their goaltenders weren't playing well, and they weren't playing well defensively. But they seem to have pulled it together a bit in the last while, and, and they're you know they're trending in the right direction. You look at it. Uh, 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 Alex Lyons confirmed for tonight. He's actually picking it up, kind of like he did at the end of last season for Florida. He's playing well. You look at his, um, you know, his last what four starts. Um, he's faced some good teams. He's gone two, one, and one, but um, he's allowed one goal, four goals, two goals, and two goals, um, and playing some good teams. Buffalo, and not a good team, but Florida, Tampa Bay, the New York Rangers. This guy is also in his last seven games has faced. 30 plus shots uh every single game uh so still the defense is allowing they're allowing a lot of shots these these are the shot totals for for alex lyon who's save save prop tonight by the way is 26 and a half saves minus 105. he's faced 37 32 30 38 36 38 and 38 again only in the game where he faced 30 shots did he have 26 saves every other game of those uh of those seven he's had 30 plus saves on goal uh or 30 plus saves and now you have washington coming in and press talked about the fact that they're not getting pucks on net they're gonna have to do something uh maybe bet the ovechkin prop because he's just going to be shooting if they're not making the playoffs he's trying to score some goals to pump up his numbers but washington struggling also has a lot to do with two things lingren who's been very good in, go in goal had a really good march five straight losses now uh, they haven't shown up for them. They're not scoring for them. They're averaging 2.65 goals per game this season, Washington is, which is 28th in the league. How do you expect to make the playoffs? You're not the New York Rangers yeah. who last year averaged 2.5 or 2.6, but had Shesterkin in goal. And this year, Shesterkin, another good season, quick, another uh, uh, very good season. You can get away with those numbers when you have defense and goaltending, and Washington does not have that right now, and that's why they're losing. The the price is right, 145, 150. It's where it should be. Give me the wings. Just we just want to Detroit. jump in quick, Andrew. Sorry. Carm, yep. that prop, that safe prop bet is what number? It's 26 and a half. And I think it's low because of the Washington. It's that DK. I think Guys, it's because of the, the that, at that under. Get shot by Google. Bet that under. You go yeah, and you dude. look, Washington. Washington, 22 shots, 16 shots, 31, 26, 20, 20, or 30, 19, 25, 21. Twice in the last yeah. 10 games, they've gone yeah. over the total. And, bet and, that, and bet that's that the point under. I'm trying to make is that's the point I'm trying to make is the last seven games, this guy's this guy's seen a lot of rubber. Uh and the books have it at 26 and a half. What are they telling you when his shot prop or his save prop is at 26 and a half and he's faced um, 30 plus shots in seven straight games, uh, like I mentioned. And they're normally, if you if you average that out, it's about 36 shots on goal a game that he is facing. Um, and his save prop is at 26 and a half and it, it should be at 29 and a half, possibly. Not twenty six yeah. and a half. I don't think and I still they like put much the faith under. on the shots on goal for the Washington Capitals tonight. We have a comment from the YouTube Shorts live right now from Lost Kid eighty two saying he would like the Capitals to win so they can put their foot on the Red Wings on Thursday. And you know Thursday is a big day as well because we have uh, the Capitals playing the Sabers, but the Red Wings and Penguins going head to head. So that'll be a huge one as far as the standings and as far as the playoff race is concerned. So it's funny right now because we have so many people that have bets on the Capitals to miss the playoffs that are tuning in live and people that have bets on the Capitals to make the playoffs uh, at all kinds of different prices. So guys, uh, we love you commenting live, whether it's YouTube shorts, whether it's Instagram, YouTube, overall Facebook, uh, we are live in so many places right now. Um, so make sure you check us out. Wager talk TV is the handle here. Um, I know a lot of people like sides better than totals, but right now guys, for the most part, I am just rocking with the totals plays. I mentioned, I like the over and the bees and canes game last time out this time. I'm going to go with the under, you know, I, I talked for so long about how Washington had not much had had pretty much next to no depth. Really? This team was Dylan Strom, Alexander Ovechkin, McMichael, couple other guys and that was it and let's not forget about tom wilson getting suspended at the most you know the inopportune time ever for the capitals during their playoff push 
And as I mentioned, Detroit, it's really been their scoring that's dried up. Their defense hasn't been that bad. And you take a look at the Washington Capitals, they haven't really scored more than three goals in over a few weeks. This team is scoring one, two, three, and that's yep. about it over their last handful of games. So I think the unders the play here, guys. I think the Capitals are realizing the scoring is drying up for them. You know, Prez used the, you know, the term the playoff, you know, feel to it for the last game. And I think it really applies to this one as well. Yep. And I mentioned that about my under yesterday with uh, Penguins and Leafs. That was an under. I think tonight is a real big defensive battle. And I think we'd be remiss if we did not mention maybe a little sprinkle on the draw here. We saw what happened yesterday, Pittsburgh, Toronto. Uh, why not get a nice plus price here on the draw in this one as a point means so much to both teams in this game. But I'm going to go with the under in this one here, guys. And uh, we've got Johnny Detroit here with us. Uh, we know what he's betting on, or we know what, uh, what what way he's cheering for here. The Detroit Red Wings as the Detroit office. It's nice seeing uh, some more people at Wager Talk besides puck time people talking about hockey in, uh, in, our, in our chat groups here at Wager Talk. And Detroit, well, they sat in a playoff spot for most of the season here, guys. So... Uh, they want to make sure they secure that spot, but it's going to be a great game. And these are the ones I'm looking forward to watching the most uh, for the rest of the year. Not as much. Some of these games where pe- teams are already locked in to their playoff spots. One more game to break down. It's a great one here, guys. The battle of New York. Uh, we have the Rangers and Islanders going head to head and Carm earlier in the day this morning. I said to you, I know it's always a big one when these two teams go head to head, but I asked you, don't you feel like this is kind of a generous price here for how well the Rangers are playing? So I'll ask you on the show, what do you think? I mean, Rangers, they were like minus 130. They've been playing unreal hockey. Is this a good price to bet on them? It's a it's a low price, man. First of all, Andrew, I we've done so much talking on the show. We're like 33 minutes in. We have one game left in the show best bets. I've like run out of words. It reminds me of, and Prez might remember this, 1998, Life is Beautiful, La Bella Vita, which is uh, Roberto Benigni started Never watched it. It. it, won the Oscar uh, based on the Holocaust. I can't believe you haven't watched it. You really should. One of the best movies ever. Uh, I was 30 at the time. That's how old I am, man. But uh um, I'm out of words. He ran across Lawrence just to make he he walked across people to get onto the stage. When he got there, he says, "I used up all my English," and he couldn't talk anymore because uh, the last award he was up, he talked for. I about remember his minutes. speech. Said, said, shut up! Yeah, so shut up, Carmen. Talk about the Rangers and the Islanders. Andrew, every time I bet against the New York Rangers, I get egg on my face. It literally, I get in front of this team that the number one team in the NHL as far as points go. Um, and maybe we're trending to a Rangers, Dallas, a Stanley Cup final. Who knows? But every time I go against them, I get egg on my face. But the Islanders, I have this little bit of love for the Islanders and what they're doing because there is no player other than you, you can name maybe one on the team that, in the sense of the guy is a superstar, but people look at him and, and they're not, they don't have the, the big show names like Edmonton does or Toronto does or Colorado does, but they find a way to win each and every time. It's not even Shosturkin in goal tonight. It's Varlamov in goal. And this guy's, I think you got to go with the hot hand. He's 5-1-1 one, and one, his last seven. And those are games against Nashville, Tampa Bay, Florida, Winnipeg, Philadelphia, and then Anaheim and Ottawa. Anaheim's probably the only one in there of a team that um, didn't give him a game. The other ones, 5-1-1, one, and one. he's playing extremely well. And then you got the, the, the Rangers at a buy low price. It's supposed to be Shesterkin in goal. And you want to talk about numbers and press. I'm going to throw some numbers at you before I give a play on this. When I talk about home and road splits, and uh, if it's Quick, Quick's got a great record uh, at Madison Square Garden. He's like 10-1. and one. He's, I think he's like 7-4 and four on the road. Shesterkin, whether he's at home or away, His numbers are identical. He's played 26 games on the road, 26 games at home. He's 19 and seven on the road, 19 and seven at home, 913 save percentage on the road, 907 save percentage at home, 264 goals against average, 2.64 on the road, 2.63 at home. There is 
no leeway with those. He's just as good on the road as he is at home. They're 13 and four against uh, uh, Metro teams. He is 13 and four against Metro teams. And here I am getting egg on my face one more time because I am going to take the plus money with the New York Islanders in this spot, plus 110. Uh, go Isles. Prez? Guys, I'm not going to come on here and make up anything. I'm not going to give out nonsense. Uh, I can hear you have a situation where the New York Rangers are a better team. I think one of the best teams in hockey, a scary team. Um, they've also won their last three games uh, against the New York Islanders. They've won three in a row. They've won eight of nine. Uh, eight of nine. New York Islanders are on fire. They've won four in a row. Uh New York Islanders are right now playing to the under. Rangers are playing to the over. Good luck to you all on this game. Yeah, I mean, it's a tight one. It's a tight one. Um, but when it comes down to it, uh, I, I'm head to head with Carm here. And it's just, I just look at the way this Rangers team is playing. They don't seem to be taking anybody lightly, you know? And I, I, I like the idea of trying to find it. some live dogs. But I just look at the way that Lafreniere is playing. Look at the ways the Benajet is playing. Look at yep. the way some of these defensemen are jumping into the rush. It's just, you know, and, and how many teams have the ability to have Jonathan Quick as their backup goaltender? You know, and it's to me that they're yep. just so well-rounded here. I, I just, I look at the way that they're playing right now and they just don't seem to be taking their, their foot off the gas pedal whatsoever. So um, I, I'm going to go ahead and lean towards the Rangers right. side here. I will say I, I kind of lean towards the under if I was to play a total, but uh, the side for me would be the Rangers. If you're interested in any props, guys, you can get Zabinijed over two and a half shots on goal. He's gone over in eight of his last 10 games. Uh, also, power play points. Adam Fox to get a power play point is real nice plus money on that. He's out there for all the power plays, quarterback in the power play, um, someone to, to be uh, looking at. And also, uh, Pierre Engvall, the former Maple Leaf uh, is getting a ton of ice time for the New York Islanders. His shots prop is actually kind of intriguing for how much uh, ice time he's getting there for the New York Islanders, guys. Guys, I got a Carm, question you wanted... for you because uh, and Andrew gave his thoughts on, on the under in this one. Um, I always say uh, trying to avoid uh, being of the mindset that past results indicate uh, future performances. So we talk about the total in this game. Minus the two uh, preseason games that these teams played, the last four games have been 4-3, um, 5-3, five, uh, yep, all over. 6-5 um, and 5-2. Do you think there's any goals in this game tonight? Or we just wipe those out because, again, uh, those are in the past, and this game has much more importance than a game that was played in November of 2013, let's say. Are you asking me or Andrew? You. About the total. Um, I like. Listen, if I, obviously I am beyond not betting this game, uh, but I would lean on the under. Lean towards the under. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I think that that the under we're, probably we're the favors under. the Islanders. We'll see. So, Got, you know, would you would Andrew, you say Carmen it correlates? First? Can you throw to me first yep. on the best bets? I got to tape the penalty box segment in exactly five minutes, and I know I'm the reason the show's <laughs> gone long. I'm a loquacious, oh, obnoxious cat. Did you did you ride today? Did you cycle today, uh, Prez? I did not, Andrew. Oh, you missed it. I've been binging Shogun. I'm not sleeping oh, much. Come on. Oh, my God. What a show. I went to the gym this morning again. I've been, I've been doing the mornings. Forget about nighttime. What do you got today, Prez? What's going on for you, know you uh, at the your website? You absolutely awesome? Guys, you know what makes the show absolutely awesome? If Prez gives us his show best bet and then goes and does what he's got to do. Prez, what do you have up at Wager Talk and give us your show best bet? Why, well, thank you, Carmunchki. <laughs> Uh, so I've got a, uh, I got an NHL money line bet for my clients, uh, 64% on the season in NHL money line bets. I'm also on a seven and oh NHL run. I'm up double digit units on the season. I've had a kick ass, uh, NHL season. I'm so thrilled with how things have been going, but more importantly, I have my first 5% play 
in baseball in two years. I did not have one single 5% play last year in the entire baseball season. So please check that out. Um, as for my best bet tonight, and this is this to me is a an, an bet that I'm actually making, and that is the Colorado Avalanche minus 135 in regulation against the Minnesota Wild. This line is shocking to me. I think it should be minus 175 in regulation. I think Colorado should be close to minus 300. Why? Minnesota's a good team. Oh, I mean, a, okay, a mediocre team. But here you have a situation where, and I'm going to talk first about Colorado. They've just lost two games in a row, and they lost to two big-time playoff coming up opponents in Edmonton and Dallas. Now they're coming home, and they're mad. And I want to bet on a team, a good team like Colorado, after they've lost two in a row. But more importantly, and back to what we were discussing at the beginning of the show, I prefer to look at why I want to bet against teams. I want a kudos, hats off to the Minnesota Wild. They did not make the playoffs, okay? They they have a route. They have to win every single game and have every team lose every single game. But they're not making the playoffs but no team in the last month has tried harder to make the playoffs than the Minnesota Wild. Flurry didn't want to be traded because he wanted Minnesota. He wanted to take Minnesota into the playoffs. They pulled a, their goalie in overtime twice to try to make the playoffs. This team gave it their all to try and make the playoffs. And now they're done. Their intensity has to have dropped. They have to be emotionally exhausted. It is a perfect spot to bet against many and a great spot to bet on Colorado. Take Colorado in regulation, minus 135. Thanks for having me, guys. And make sure to watch Wager Talk today in exactly 17 minutes. Lots of love to the both of you. Prez, best of luck to you. Best of luck to our production team trying to clip that best bet. Might need an, uh, an external hard drive, but uh, Prez, uh, record that penalty box segment. We'll see you on Wager Talk today. Carm, what do you have going tonight? Oh, that's going to take a while, Andrew. I, I have to I have to believe uh, the nickname Carmunchke is actually from Vivian, uh, Lawrence's better half. Uh, she calls me that. So that's where that name come from. He's just uh, stealing it from her. Uh, two games up in Champions League this afternoon. It is the quarterfinals, leg one of the knockout stages. Two really good games today. I got a couple plays up at Wager Talk. And three plays up in the NHL for me tonight. We're going to try and keep that uh, that good run going. 9-2-1 uh, and one, uh, run the last, I think, week or so. And uh, dating back to... Um, the All-Star break, uh, January 1st, uh, up 45 units in the NHL. We need to pick it up 10 more days, and then we are into the playoffs. Uh, let's kill it, guys. Uh, for my clients, my best bet's going to be the game we discussed, Detroit Red Wings uh, in this one. I like the way Alex Lyon is playing. I hope uh, he doesn't have a stinker tonight, but the guy has been solid, and he was solid down the stretch last year for Florida. He's the guy they might need. Get him some support. Uh, you're playing against a team that doesn't score a lot, 2.65 uh, goals on average in the Washington Capitals. Get that win tonight, Detroit. Try and solidify that playoff spot. Uh, every two points is important. Detroit win, Red Wings, minus 145 is your show best bet. Carm, uh, keep on rolling, man. And guys, uh, that deal, the BOGO special is still alive for Carmine and myself. Buy one, get one uh, for the remainder of the regular season. I've been quiet in the NHL uh, and I got to pull my weight as far as that BOGO special is concerned. And tonight, Carm, I will certainly be doing that. Guys, a huge slate for me tonight. Minimum four games. Four bets given out uh, for my clients in the NHL. I love this slate. Took a couple days off. Wanted to start getting back in rhythm. As everybody knows, it's not really been my best season. I want to get into form before the playoffs and get on a big, big run. Love this slate tonight, guys. So buy that package. Get myself and Carmine for the rest of the regular season. All of our plays. My best bet for puck time for today. We're going to go over Carolina and Boston up and over five and a half. I love when I can get a matchup with two teams that played a week, a week and a half ago. 
The game went under. It was 4-1, but the expected goals said this game should have absolutely sailed over the total. Now this game is in Boston at TD Garden, where four of the last five games played there have gone over. I believe these two teams clash tonight. The power plays get going. We see lots of goals, lots of star power on both teams. Let's cash this over five and a half Carolina and Boston guys. It was certainly an entertaining show uh, filled with all kinds of different stuff, but I hope you got some picks. Hope you got some entertainment. Hopefully we can cash these tickets on behalf of Carmine and Prez. I am Andrew. Thanks for watching the show. We'll see you tomorrow right here on puck time.